Hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. I wanted to talk to you about Frostpunk, which is a game I've been playing recently. And I've actually been playing this on the Xbox Series X uh, Game Pass. So it's a game that, it's not new or anything. Uh, it's from 2018 by uh, 11-Bit Studios. And I always wanted to give it a shot, but my PC could never run it. So Game Pass was a great way to play it, even though it is the console version. And as you can see here, it is a strategy game of sorts. It's more like a survival game, but it shares a lot in common with Civilization, Age of Empires, games like that, where you're building stuff, you're keeping all your citizens happy, building new technologies, etc., etc. So it's a lot harder than those games, in my opinion, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But first, I'll just talk a little bit about the console version here, which I think actually is a pretty admirable job as far as porting it over. Uh, these games are always going to be better with a mouse and keyboard, but I think they do a relatively respectable job here. I miss all the hot keys and things like that that I would have on a keyboard, and the left click and right click definitely takes a little longer to do everything and it's just way snappier on a PC to play a game like this but overall I'm pretty happy with what they've done with the console version here now onto the game itself like I said it's a strategy game but it's more like a survival game you're there's not a ton of options as far as different directions you can go in there are different laws you can pass that have a little bit of flexibility as far as directions that you can go in for your society or your town. But as far as building things, you're always going to be building facilities for people to live in. You're going to be building workshops to research technologies. It's all very similar game to game as far as each run that you make, as far as the stuff that you're going to build. And you can't really stray too far off the beaten path. Later on in the game, I'm sure you can, but I haven't really gotten that far in this game because it is pretty hard. And judging from the Steam reviews, it seems like everyone pretty much agrees, whether they like the game or not, that it is pretty difficult. So I don't feel too bad about it kicking my ass, but this game brought back a lot of memories as far as just how much I love these kind of games but how they also like frustrate the hell out of me. And I'll get into a little bit of that with Frostpunk because essentially these kind of games, the first few times you play it, you don't really know what you're doing and you inevitably fail or things don't progress how you would like them and you end up starting over or whatever. Frostpunk is a lot more definitive. If you fail, you fail. The game's over and you gotta try again. So that's where it differs very much from you know your civilizations or things like that so it has a bit of it's, it's pretty much a real-time strategy but there's a very definitive end there's a very definitive failure point as far as technologies you're kind of going to research the same technologies every time in my opinion because you need coal you need wood to build things you need food to keep people fed so I think that while there are a lot of choices here, it all kind of amounts to the same end game. You're still trying to keep, get everyone to survive, and you're still trying to maintain those meters on the bottom of the screen that you see there. The discontent, you want to keep low. The hope, you want to keep high. And these prove more and more difficult as the game goes on, as you might expect. The thing that bugs me about games like this is that oftentimes I feel like it's not so much that the game is difficult, but that you're just trying to figure out what the hell the game wants you to do. And I've had a lot of that in Frostpunk, and it's really starting to frustrate me. Keep in mind, I'm not great at these games or anything like that. So if you play games like this, if you've played Frostpunk and you're like, well, if you don't get it, you're just kind of an idiot. That's your right, I guess. I, I'm not saying that I'm great at these games and that there's something quote-unquote wrong with this game. But what I find in these sort of games is that I always end up scouring the internet for advice and I find out all these little weird quirks that the game has that don't make a ton of logical sense and that if I knew them ahead of time, 
I might fare better in the game, or I still am just confused about why they exist to begin with. So for example, in this game, you're always going to be starved for more citizens uh, because citizens are workers, right? So when you need more coal or when you're short on wood to build things or what have you, you're always going to be hoping that the scouts that you sent out find more people to bring back so you can employ them and get them to produce these resources. Well, I found out that the, no matter how many people I found, I would always be short of resources. Now, of course, that's the point of the game, right? You're always pushing and pulling levers up and down. Hey, I need more coal. Let me take some people off of wood and they'll source some more coal and then that'll get me up to speed. Well, it always so happens that you just don't have enough people. So for example, if you need more people working in medical tents because people are getting sick, you can do that but then you end up taking workers away from coal or from your hunter lodges, for example, so they won't be able to hunt for food as much. So then people will start to go hungry or they're still, they'll, they'll start to get cold. And it just never ends. And I'm sure some of you that have played the game are shouting, yes, that's the point of the game. But to me, the whole time, all I did was feel like I was just under the gun the entire time. And again, yes, that's the point, I suppose. But there was never a time where I thought to myself, Eureka, I've figured it out. I'll have this many people gathering coal, this many people gathering wood, this many people hunting for food, and I got it. At least for the time being, I got it. We've got everything we need for this very moment. It never happened. And also, there are just things that the game does that are just beyond my understanding. You can have plenty of medical tents and have them fully staffed and people will get sick and they'll complain that too many people are sick. So they'll, they'll say to you, we need you to get some people better. So you choose the option that says, we'll heal everyone. So you're fully staffed, all your medical tents are there. You won't even come close to getting everyone healed. So I don't understand what, what the deal is. Like, what do I got to do? How many tents do I have to build? I have plenty of tents. Also, I've run into issues where people are cold, which obviously that's going to come up in the game because the temperature drops. And I think to myself, well, I don't want to run the generator too hot because that'll burn way too much coal than I could possibly gather. So I'll put some heaters around the town and that'll heat up individual sections of the town. Well, that didn't work. They still weren't warm enough. So I played another game and I thought, I'll double up the heaters. So some spaces will be doubled up and they'll be getting twice the heat. They'll be twice as warm. That'll work, right? No, it doesn't work. The heaters still don't warm them up any more than if you had one single heater. You can have two, it doesn't matter, which makes no sense. Also for food, you have hunters that go out and hunt for food, obviously. And then you have a cookhouse. And those employees, what they do is they prepare the food and put them into meals. Makes sense, right? So those are the two components you need to feed people. Well, I couldn't keep up with that either. No matter how many hunters I had, the people just wouldn't eat for some reason. I also found out when I was on the internet that when you have a cookhouse, you only have to have one employee in it, even though you can have, I think, 10 or something like that. And the reason is because for some reason, cookhouses are really efficient. You only need one cookhouse with one employee throughout most of the game. That is what my understanding from people that are actually good at this game. My question is how in the world was I supposed to figure that out or know that? Because honestly, everything else that you gather in this game, raw food, coal, etc., you want to have 10 or 15 people on each spot where they're gathering resources because if you don't, their efficiency goes down. Apparently the cookhouse is impervious to this. It's the only building in the game where you only have to have one single employee and you only have to build one of them throughout most of the game. Meanwhile, if you need coal, you need to constantly build machinery to source coal and constantly find employees. It just doesn't make sense. And the whole time I'm 
incorporating laws that will keep people happy because you want to keep your people happy because there's a big event partway through the game where their hope goes down drastically and people start revolting. So I started signing laws like I built a bar for people to go to. I built a fighting arena for people to watch fights and bet on fights. All this stuff that has no downside but gives people more hope. Well, as soon as that event happens, your hope drops precipitously and it's almost impossible to get it back. So all that work I put in basically amounts to nothing. They only care about the last thing that happened, whether it be good or bad. If they hear that there was an, another civilization found and the people are all dead, the hope drops drastically. If people start revolting, the hope drops drastically. And it's just like no matter what you did all the way leading up to that point, it just doesn't matter because the game wants to put you in this precarious situation. And it's just not correct in my opinion. So basically I just spend a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what the game wants from me. And I can't. And I've tried, you know, probably eight or ten times right now. I've made eight or ten runs of this game, and I still get stuck at the same exact part. Obviously, there are other people that either haven't had trouble with it, or figured it out, or didn't think it was that bad. I really don't understand what the game wants me to do. Basically, every time I play this game, I get to a point where I don't have enough citizens to work, the, the temperature drops so drastically that I cannot produce enough coal or devote enough workers to coal to keep everyone warm. And if I devote that many citizens to coal, they start going hungry and they start getting sick. It's like no matter what I do, this game will not cooperate. And I guess that's the fun of it for some people. So let me know in the comments, have you guys played this game? Am I just missing the point? Is there some vital bit of information that I've missed that's keeping me from enjoying this game? Because I really do want to enjoy it more than I have. And I, I had some fun just kind of figuring things out, but now that it's stonewalling me, I'm getting a little pissed. So I would love to hear your advice. Let me know what you thought of this video and what else you might want me to cover. And I'll talk to you guys next time. See you later.